I'm Hillary. Welcome to the Nurse Preceptor channel. I'm glad that you are here with us today. I first of all wanted to do a shameless plug of my book, You're on Your Own Preparing for the Impending Healthcare Crisis. I recommend that you get yourself a hard copy of this. It's also available on ebook for a little bit less, but the hard copy is invaluable. Appendix A is worth the price of the book. It has a list of things that I recommend every household have on hand so that you can provide health care to yourself or your family in the event that you become ill or have kind of an urgent care type of injury. It gives you uh, This book gives you the knowledge, the information, and the recommended purchases so that you can do more to take care of yourself at home on your own terms and avoid having to uh, have a hefty copay or exposure to other people's illnesses in a waiting room. So you can get that on Amazon. I will provide links to that below. Or if you'd like a personalized copy, you can get one off of the website of my publisher, denimlikepublishing.com. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is how to use the stethoscope. So I had a stethoscope as one of the recommended purchases that I think every household should have. But having equipment isn't the same thing as knowing how to use it. So I wanted to give you some resources today so that you can learn how to use this very valuable piece of equipment. There is a really good reason that nurses and doctors and respiratory therapists carry these around with them all the time at the hospital. And it's because it can give you a lot of information that's actionable. I will say that one other purchase that goes hand in hand with the stethoscope is a pulse oximeter. I have a very simple pocket pulse oximeter. It even has a lanyard, so you can wear it around your neck if you want to for convenience, but you can put it, put it on your finger, it lights up, it tells you not only your heart rate, but also your oxygen saturation. So if you had concerns about somebody who's having some respiratory symptoms, it can give you additional information that can be actionable, and it can help to advise you whether it might be time to actually go and get evaluated by a professional. Now, the first thing I want to say with learning how to use a stethoscope is that it's not very difficult. The most important thing to know, though, is your normal breath sounds. The best way to learn normal breath sounds is, for one, go online. I will provide a couple of resources in the description below where you can listen to normal breath sounds that have been amplified so that you can learn what those normal breath sounds are. Normal breath sounds are going to be the breath sounds that you would hear in a healthy individual who is breathing, taking deep breaths, blowing, blowing out, breathing in. And what you want to do when you're listening to someone with a stethoscope is listen to them through a few breaths and then move the stethoscope around. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to take off my jacket so that you can get a better idea of where the landmarks are. For one thing, if you listen right over bone, you're not going to hear much because sound doesn't transmit through bone. So what you want to be sure you listen to is the spaces in between the ribs, along the sides, and, under, and underneath on the lower part of the ribs. When you're listening to someone in the back, you want to avoid the shoulder blades because, again, sound doesn't transmit well through the shoulder blade bone. So you have to listen to that part in between the shoulder blades and the backbone. So you wanna listen there and then listen underneath the shoulder blades all the way around again to the side of the ribs. If you listen under the ribs, you're not going to catch breath sounds under normal circumstances. So I'm gonna put the stethoscope in. First of all, when you have, when you have your stethoscope and you look at it, the ear pieces are curved and you want to have them so that they are facing forward toward your face. Okay, so they go in your ear and they should be pushing forward and it should seal your ears pretty well. It's almost like having noise canceling ear, ear pods in. Um, you want to just gently tap on your stethoscope a few times. Make sure that you can hear um, some amplified noise coming through there. If you have one like I have, it has a, a, a diaphragm which has the usually the logo on it, and then the bell, which is empty. It's like the diaphragm without the diaphragm on it. Uh, I don't use this part as much as I use the diaphragm part. It gives you the, the more bang for your buck. So when you're listening, you want to have whoever it is you're listening to, or if it's yourself, relax, sit up, take easy breaths in and out, nice and deep, but, but not forced, not rapid. Just breathe in, breathe out, and have them be quiet and not talk while they're doing that. So again, breathe in, breathe out. You want to compare one side against the other side and then go a little bit lower, same thing, breathe in, 
breathe out and repeat on the other side. As you're listening lower, I'm gonna scoot back here. <laughs> As you're listening lower, you will notice that the sounds that were quite loud up at the top are going to be a little bit softer toward the sides and toward the bottom of the rib cage. So you want to listen to one side, then the other, and you're comparing to hear sounds on both sides. So in the event of a normal, uh, a normal respiratory assessment, you should hear nice soft, nice soft sounds as they're breathing in, nice soft sounds as they're blowing out. You shouldn't be hearing any extra crackly sounds or squeaky sounds or rough sounds that sound really coarse. Um, I will give you some examples of those in some of the um, links that I provide below. As far as the abnormal breath sounds, those are important to really know well. Um, if Again, you want to know the normal sounds because then you will recognize abnormal sounds when they come up. If you are hearing a sound that is very high pitched and kind of squeaky, it comes and goes, um, it's al almost like um, the sound of air coming out of a small balloon. Those are what we call wheezes. Um, I, I, from time to time, even get those during allergy season if I've really been exerting myself running or working out on the treadmill. Um, sometimes those can be um, almost like an expected abnormal sound. If somebody is having an asthma attack, you will probably hear very, very loud wheezes. Um, so that can clue you into the fact that there is a narrowing of the airway. Have the person take some more deep breaths, try to get them to cough a little bit and see if those sounds resolve. If they do not, or if the person is having shortness of breath associated with them and they are resting, they're not exerting themselves, then at that point that would be a good indication that if you are someone who knows you have asthma or COPD and you have a rescue inhaler, that would be a good time to consider using the rescue inhaler. Again, it gives you more information if you're also looking at the pulse oximeter. If it's 99 or 100 percent and they're having some wheezing, yeah, maybe the inhaler still would help. But if they're basically not having shortness of breath, it may not be necessary. So if they are having wheezes with shortness of breath, that's time to get over to the urgent care or to an emergency department and have them checked out. Um, we also sometimes have sounds called ronchi, uh, which are otherwise known as like, like a coarse crackle or coarse wheeze. Um, ronchi are very harsh sounds. If you can imagine, it's almost like having a piece of paper or a paper bag where someone's crumpling it up. Like it's a very harsh sound or a loud sound with a lot of turbulence. Um, and a lot of times you hear that kind of toward where the larger airways are. And that's a sound that is associated with um, increased congestion of the airways. Have the person cough cough pretty vigorous, vigorously, take some more deep breaths and listen again and see if that clears on its own. Sometimes it will and sometimes not. If you're hearing a lot of abnormal sounds throughout the airways or if you are hearing this um, a sound that we call crackles, especially down toward the bases of the lungs, which is toward the bottom of the rib cage, at that point, have the person take some deep breaths and cough, see if it resolves. Um, if they are having signs of um, like shortness of breath, chest pain, fever, or an upper, signs of an upper respiratory illness along with the sounds of crackles, that is a very good indication that you should get in and get professionally evaluated by a qualified healthcare professional because that may or may not be a sign of pneumonia. So to review, normal airway sounds or normal breath sounds are um, soft, regular, and there are no extra sounds added in along with the breath sounds. Um, abnormal breath sounds do require um, some further follow-up. So first, reposition, cough, take some more deep breaths and listen. Assess the pulse oximeter if you have it available. If you're hearing a lot of abnormal sounds, especially in the presence of things like shortness of breath, a low pulse oximeter, which in a normal person, in a very healthy normal person, anything under about 95, some the lower end of normal would be 92%. If you're seeing something below that, um, you really should seek professional em medical evaluation and don't hesitate to do that. And if you basically have cause for concern in general, I would recommend always consulting with a medical professional for peace of mind, if nothing else.
But this information can at least help guide you and know how to triage yourself if you're on the fence of whether or not you have something going on or whether or not you may need to seek medical opinions. I hope that helps. Please uh, like this video if you found it valuable and consider subscribing to my channel. I am uh, a little bit irregular at posting at this point. I've had a, just a lot of things going on, but I do plan to have some more instructional videos for you, especially right now while a lot of people are sick. It helps you to be able to assess yourself at home and know when medical intervention is definitely indicated and maybe help give you peace of mind in case you're one of the worried well and you're just concerned about your well-being. It might help to give you that peace of mind that you need. All right. In the meantime, stay healthy. Consider getting a copy of my book and learn how to take care of yourselves at home. Thanks. Bye.